All right, so in the spirit of unpivoting columns, we also have to talk about the opposite of unpivoting columns, which is pivot columns. Now, when we pivot columns in Power Query, what's going to happen is items that we have inside a column are going to be used as column headers to create new columns, basically. And one more time, this is also better when we see an example of this description. So I'm going back to my desktop, open up my Power Query Essentials folder, and I have a number six file there called Pivot. So when I open up this, my number six file, we have two worksheets here. The first one is for the pivot data and the second one is a clean version of how this should look like when we are done pivoting. So when we want to pivot a column, for example, when you look at column E in this data set, you are going to see that we are essentially talking about different metrics here. So for every single order that you see here, you are going to see that we are capturing sales, quantity, discount, and profit. Then you have the next order right there, and we are also capturing sales, quantity, discount, and profit. So at the end of the day, we may want to create separate columns for sales, another column for quantity, another one for discount, and another one for profit, which essentially means that we want to pivot this metric column. Now remember, that if we had those columns here before now and we wanted them to look like this, we would have done an unpivot. So once we are done pivoting this column, we are going to have something that will look like the clean version here, whereby instead of having the sales quantity discount and profit in an unpivoted fashion like this, we are going to have them in a pivoted fashion, right? So there are times when it makes more sense for you to pivot your data columns, most likely because they represent different metrics in your data and you would like to keep them as separate columns. Now we're going to see how to do this in Power Query, but just before we do that, it is important to note that whenever we pivot a column in Power Query, we are going to need to aggregate the values column, right? So for example, if you look at the other IDs from row number five here or six, if you are looking at it from the Excel perspective, all the way to this 17 here, you will see that they contain the same orders. Now, in as much as they contain the same orders, they have like replication or duplication of sales quantity discount and value. So for example, on this row six, for the same order, I have sales. And then if you check on row 10, for the same exact order, I have another sales value. And when you check on row 14 for the exact same order, I have another sales value. So what will happen eventually is when we apply pivot to this column, all these sales values for that particular order are going to be aggregated by whatever aggregation method we select. In this case, it's going to be a sum aggregation method. So let's go to Power Query to see how to complete this task. So I'm going to get data from Excel workbook from my desktop. I've got this Power Query Essentials folder and I want to connect to my number six file pivot. And I will be importing the pivot column data worksheet. I will click on transform data to open up my Power Query editor. And I have the unpivoted data and I want to make the items in the metric column to have their own standalone columns, which means I would like to have separate columns. If I click on the drop down for metric, you are going to see that in the metric column, I have four distinct items there discounts, profit, quantity, and sales. And I would like to use these distinct items to create separate columns in my data. So I basically want to pivot this metric column. So I'm going to go over to my transform tab and I will look for where I have pivot column. So when I click on the pivot column, the first thing I'm going to have to supply is my values column. That is the column that I need to carry out aggregation on. So I'll go over here 
and select the amount column as what will be aggregated. Remember, the case of the order that has different sales amounts, it also has different profit and different quantity and different discount as well. So we are going to have to aggregate everything if we are using those four values as four different columns. Now, we also have an advanced option here where we can choose the kind of aggregation to apply. Most times, it's always going to be a sum aggregation when we are pivoting columns. So I'm just going to leave that and I will go ahead to click OK. Then you will see that I have my four columns in sales, quantity, discount, and profit. And of course, like I said, the opposite of pivot is on pivot. So if I had selected these four columns, sales, quantity, discount, and profit, I could have right clicked on any of those headers to select on pivot columns. That means I want to on pivot this selected columns and you will see that it brings me back to the exact spots where I was and then I could also come here and select pivot columns again and select my value column in this instance because now that I use pivots the numbers column is now shown as value and I'm going to select value as my value column and click OK you will see that that will also bring me back to the pivoted data table. Of course, I really don't need these last two steps. I just use that for demonstration.